My bag wrong button. It broke off. Fell out in the street somewhere. And uh, basically this right here was dragging the ground. So now it's being bungee corded up. Here to get creative. I already had the bungee cord. I just had to get it to hold up. Now I'm going to drag the ground as so y'all can see. So that's good. What does DOT say about all this? Nothing. That's what they say. You know. Ain't nothing unsafe about it. Who gives a fuck? Just get creative. Make sure ain't nothing falling off the trailer. And you all good. How often do we replace trailer tires at this company? Uh, I ain't never had a trailer blowout, so I, I I never seen the trailer tire blown out. I don't know if these are off-road tires or what, but uh, somebody asked me that question. So, when it comes to the pneumatic trailer, the only thing that's gonna go wrong with the trailer is this bottom line right here. It don't matter what company you work with, whether they got a two million dollar trailer or the two dollar trailer, the same pipe is gonna have the same issues. Why? Because it's real simple. The sand, the sand eats through the metal. So it really don't matter what company you work with, you're gonna have the exact same problem on this exact same pipe. You know? So <laughs> that's what you're gonna be repairing. Clamps, yeah, just this whole get to get used to it. Get used to it. Just once you get the tools and you know what to do, it just you just kind of walk back here. Okay, got a little hole seal, take that off, pull that out, take the JB well, stick that on, close it back up. You know, it's shit. If this right here, if something was coming, oh, got to hold the camera up. If uh, sand was coming through here, take the screwdriver, take the clamps off. This this pipe falls down just like like that did. It falls down right here. You take that off, slide this off, put a new one on, you know. So, the key is just to make sure you got all the tools to repair everything. Three to six feet. Y'all want to know what I'm driving. It's three to six feet. Nothing special. You know. You got your emergency valve. You got your top out. I don't use the top at all. Kind of pointless to me. I use the emergency valve and I use the bottom pressure valve right here. I don't know what it's called. I just came up with a name for it. Two valves I use, so uh, this right here is just in case you fuck up on the pressure. You know, you just let all the air out right there. But basically, what I do when I start my blower, I come back here. Hold this down to get the air going. And I watch the pressure gauge when it gets to the pressure I want. Which for me, I do uh, about 18 tank pressure, 18 PSI. When the tank pressure gets to 18 PSI, I close this back up just like that. I come down here and I set this to 10 PSI. So this would be zero PSI right there, of course. As you go down, the PSI increases. So maybe two. You know five ten stop it at ten so then you got 15 tank pressure 10 line pressure and that's it now only time you need to use the emergency valve is let's say the move is full if the if the mover happen to fill up what's gonna happen is the line pressure is gonna go from 10 all the way up to like 20 30 you know you never know and that's when you come back here and you will Pull down the emergency valve, but anyways, got the oversize coming through. He ain't supposed to be driving in the middle of the night, but this the desert. We ain't got DOT, so who gives a fuck? No good hell. Well, that shit is not supposed to be coming through at night. Got a water tanker right here. That's a, that's a production water tanker. It's the difference between the guys that's doing production production water hauling. Those guys right there make a top dollar because they going to the well. They not going to uh, wherever else them guys go, you know. <laughs> Got the blower situation going on. People pay about $10,000 for these blowers brand new. My guy, he don't spend no more than 5000 He always get them used, you know. He, what he do, he get to use blowers 
And what he'll do is he'll put on a new drive shelf, which is that right there. I think that's called the drive. So he'll just put on certain new parts for it. As long as the blower start up, got your hot air hose. Basically, this connects right here. So you'll just take the top off there like that. Take the hot air hose, connect it, and start up the blower. That's all it. Basically, the blower just blow hot air through, through, down throughout the trailer. That's all. Ain't nothing special. Nothing special to it but the damn price. That's all it do is blow it. Blow out, that's all it is, but got some tires back here. Okay, that's still good. Well, anyways, trailer repair is done. I'm gonna go pick that shit up in a minute. I know some people watching want to know when I'm gonna go pick the trash. I'm gonna go pick it up. Hell, I got a lot of trash out here. Just gotta look and see. You never know. I think my breakfast and shit still over here. What the hell was I eating this morning? A goddamn steak from this morning. You never know. You get lucky. You come through here searching. Hell uh, yeah. <laughs> My goddamn trash can out here. <laughs> Anyways, it's cold as hell. We're gonna hop in the truck and take on off. And uh, I guess y'all got a free midnight video if it get put up or not. I don't know. I'm going here. Well, the heat I need some cooling, but I couldn't get my cooling cap off. I got the damn hell. Six hundred forty-six thousand miles. My guy don't spend no more than ten thousand dollars on his trailers. Uh, he still ain't figured out why anybody would pay, you know, a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand, two million dollars on a trailer when the ten thousand dollar trailer have been doing the same job as every other trailer out here since the oil field started. So he ain't figured it out yet, and now that I'm using these older trailers because I ain't had no new trailer at all and all these trailers are 1970s and 60s and 80s I ain't you know I don't know what the difference between a new trailer is except for I guess you could press a button and it automatically open the hatches up top and you ain't got to climb on top of the trailer that's the only new thing I done seen about it but I don't know I don't know I have to go to over to the major carriers to uh, figure that one out as far as the truck, the truck is running nice and strong. Cummins ISS, uh, no truck problems whatsoever. Um, you know, pull is good at 80,000 pounds, still can do 80 miles per hour. Real good engine, but ain't all Cummins good engines. Yep, Peterbilt 386. You know, got my CB radio up there. Keep it on all day, channel 19, no static. Nice and tuned. Out here in the oil field, a lot of everybody uses CB radio, so I noticed uh, a lot of people, not a lot of people, but certain older guys think that CB radios are, uh, are uh, going obsolete, but it's, it's not that it's going obsolete, it's just the field that he's in, CB radios are going obsolete. And that field is OTR. OTR, it may be going obsolete in the oil field. If you ain't got one, your ass ain't getting loaded. That's how the ship was out. It's real simple. You ain't got no CB radio. They're going <laughs> to they give you a list of places you can go buy one and come back when you get one. <laughs> Anyways, uh, guess I'll be out. So y'all a little trailer repair. I know y'all going to be... It's gonna be some people talking shit. Oh my god, don't you think it'll be worth it to take a pay cut so you ain't gotta go out there and do that? Uh, no, I don't think it's I don't think any type of pay cut will be worth it for a damn five minute repair. Alright guys, I'm out. I'm take my gloves off, get out of all this shoe shine I got going on right here. Ah.